Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back. Today I want to talk about taking a backup of your virtual machines, which you are running on VMware, of course, with your Synology NAS. I'm a big fan of Synology NAS because it's, it's just a solution that works in a home environment, but also in the enterprise. They have the enterprise uh, appliances, the enterprise software, but also for home use. And I'm using Synology in combination with VMware for my home lab and my demo purposes. So I'm going to show you how to take backups of those virtual machines running on VMware using Synology Active Backup for Business. Let's get into it. Synology Active Backup for Business. This is the website where everything is explained. Basically, I will leave the link in the description below, of course. And from the backup perspective, there are several features there, but the most important features, let's talk about them. This is one of them is the incremental backup, right? So you can use the VMware change block tracking feature and then take incremental backups of those virtual machines. That means the first backup you take will be, of course, all the data those virtual machines have on your VMware platform. But after that, using VMware change block tracking, it will only backup the changes. So that's very nice and convenient because then every new backup will be very fast. Also, we have application aware image backup. That means that if there are several applications running within that virtual machine, like for example, Microsoft Exchange or Active Directory or Microsoft SQL, now using application aware um, image backups, you can take backups, consistent backups of those applications as well, running in those virtual machines. Of course, another feature which is very important is deduplication because we all know that we want to minimize storage used with our backup solution. And that means that when we can save space by using deduplication, well, that's uh, a big advantage of a backup solution which can do it. And Active Backup for Business from Synology can do that perfectly. Of course, another thing is that you need to verify backups because when you need to do a restore, let's hope that you never need it, of course, but if you need to restore something from that backup, well, you need to be able to do that consistently and you need to be able to rely on that backup. Now, there is a feature within Active Backup for Business, which is verify backup reliability. And what it will do, it will spin up those backups you have and see if they can be restored, see if there is an error. Basically, it's a sort of a virtual environment it will spin up and restore vms in that environment automatically on a schedule which you can define so that's from the backup perspective but also there are a few features here which are very handy and very important if you are looking for a robust active backup solution right the three to one rule so you can replicate and copy backups to different locations in case uh, there is a failure on, on one of your locations, right? Uh, that means you have a copy of those backups on different on, a, on different media and different locations. So that's very important to have as well. And Active Backup for Business from Synology can do that for you. Now, from the recover part, because you can, of course, quickly restore those VMs to the same hypervisor or to a new hypervisor. So that means if you have backups made with Synology's Active Backup for Business, you can restore those virtual machines, which were on VMware, for example. You can restore them to that same VMware platform you made the backup from, but also to a different VMware platform. Now, this is very flexible because now you're able to migrate workloads, virtual machines from one VMware platform to another VMware platform. For instance, if you need to do upgrades or you're changing data centers, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now, another one is also recover to virtual machine manager because Synology also has their own hypervisor running on the NAS on that, uh, on that appliance. And uh, you can restore backups made with Active Backup for Business, being it from VMware or Hyper-V or physical, you can restore them to their own virtual machine manager, their own hypervisor for example, for testing purposes, or maybe that VMware host is broken down, hardware is broken, has failed, and you need to restore those workloads, you have enough resources on your Synology Nest, now you can use Virtual Machine Manager to restore those workloads and keep your business running, for example. 
Also, self-service recovery portal. This is something very important because now admins and authorized users can go through that portal and restore, select a specific restore point for a virtual machine and restore that virtual machine, right? If you just need that one specific file from that virtual machine, from a specific date, now an admin or an authorized user can use that self-service recovery portal to restore only that one file from that point in time. Very important features to have in a backup solution. And well, guess what? Active Backup for Business from Synology provides you with all those options. This is just a small subset of the features I'm describing here. Of course, you can read all about it in the link on the website. I will leave it in the description below. Now, this is my DSM, my testing platform, my testing DSM, a Synology DSM. So I already have installed Active Backup for Business. It's running, I can open it. When you open it for the first time, it will run through a wizard and it will create automatically this is Synology file station now. It will automatically create a share named Active Backup for Business. And in this share, it will store the backups. So that's something good to know. Now, let's open up Active Backup for Business and see how it looks. Let me minimize this window. So Active Backup for Business. This is the overview. Very nice. You can see the backup calendar here as well. If you have, of course, I have not uh, scheduled something here yet because I will walk you through that. And then you will see um, schedules here appear. So what I'm going to do in this video is only the virtual machine. As you can see on the left side, there are several options there. You can back up another Synology NAS. You can back up a physical PC or a Mac. You can back up even a physical server. It will install an agent there. And using that agent, it will pull those backups in. I'm not going to do that today. You can even back up file servers if you have to. And then restore them as well. Today, I will only talk about those virtual machines because in my home lab, and just like a lot of you guys, you're using VMware to host and run your virtual machines. So what I will do is I will connect this Active Backup for Business instance to my ESXi host. It can be your vCenter as well. It doesn't matter. So the first thing is click on Manage the Hypervisor. Let's do that because I want to add a hypervisor here. The nice thing here is as well that there are several you can add several hypervisors. So you, you would be able to add several VMware environments, several vCenters or several ESXi hosts, and be able to back up virtual machines running on those different vCenters and on those different VMware environments. So let's click on add to add my ESXi host. I'm not going to use vCenter because the process is the same for vCenter as for ESXi host. I have an ESXi host running up and running, it is properly licensed as well. So let me enter the login credentials of that ESXi host. This is it. I will copy and paste that IP address, of course, for convenience. It will talk to the HTTPS port because this is where the web, the web admin interface is running and ESXi is listening here for the commands. So in my case, it's just the root account I have defined on that ESXi host. That's okay. In your case, of course, you should have a service, a specific service account, uh, account for a production environment, right? Now let's click on next. It tells me, hey, I see a certificate there on that ESXi host, but it is a certificate I don't trust. That's fine because this ESXi host is just a demo, right? The certificate here is a self-signed certificate, which is being installed when you do a default install of ESXi, and that's nice. So I will say, yes, I will trust it. Now it will say, all right, I have successfully authenticated and I am able to do to take backups of all those VMs running there because everything is looking a okay. Click on done. As you can see here, it will show you, show you some information and it will say it's online. So that's the part from for adding uh, ESXi host or a vCenter host to communicate with Active Backup for Business for Synology. As you can see here, it tells me the connection of each hypervisor is fine now. If I would add multiple hypervisors here, it will also show me the status of all those other hypervisors. Now, this is the part of connecting VMware to Active Backup for Business. The next part is creating a task. 
So we have to create a backup task now because that's where we define which VMs we will backup, right? So we we'll click on the create task option, leave the name as is, that's fine. Of course, you can configure auto discovery as you can see here, if you hover with your mouse on the eye icon there, it will tell you it will automatically detect new added virtual machines and include them in the backup. That's very convenient, of course, if, for example, DevOps have their own VMware platform, you have added that VMware platform to Active Backup for Business, and they are creating a lot of virtual machines, etc. You don't want to get into that, but you want to take backups of those newly created virtual machines. Now, you can set up auto discovery. It will add them automatically to a backup task. So let's expand my host, my ESXi host. I can see that there is one virtual machine running there. So if I select my virtual machine and I click on next, I can now specify the backup destination. The first one, this is the backup destination, which is created when you install Active Backup for Business. And of course you are able to select a different share. If you have a different share configured on your Synology, you can enable it. As you can see here, everything is available. I will just select the default one it creates. That's nice and fine. Click on next. So I have some features here. This is for the backup destination. This is for that specific Active Backup Business share which is created automatically right this is file station i can browse the shares here this is the active backup for business share it creates now this is these are the settings for that backup destination means do i want to enable compression at that backup destination that means that every backup which is being stored in that backup destination in my case that's the active backup for business share will be compressed something to keep in mind because compression takes up cpu cycles and resources you have to find a balance if you want to do that or not another one is encrypt backup destination if you select this what will happen is it will set up encryption for the whole share that means that when your synology for example is uh, has rebooted this share will not be automatically visible in file station or your file share because it's encrypted it needs to be mounted with that specific password you set up here of course you can say to synology well you can mount it automatically so keep in mind the share that you select as a backup destination for that initial backup task you create it will if you enable these two options encryption and compression it's enabled on that backup share level, not for the backups you create. This is These are the settings for the backup destination. So I will just leave them at default and not enable them for demo purposes and click on next. Now in the task settings, you can define how many devices will be backed up at the same time. I will just leave it at two. You can, of course, depending on the resources you have on your VMware platform and your Synology NAS, you can choose a higher number. This will, of course, use more CPU cycles, more bandwidth, more memory. So keep that in mind. Another one is, I will leave change block tracking. It's enabled by default. I will leave it at that. The virtual machine I'm taking a backup of has no specific applications in it. So I will leave this option disabled. Of course, if you're doing like SQL backups or exchange backups or Active Directory, enable this application aware backup here. Now, data transfer during uh, compression during data transfer do you want to compress the data that's being sent over from that esxi from that vmware platform to your synology nas well in my case it's just a home lab i don't care i have enough bandwidth between those two uh, um, appliances to do the devices i will leave it at uh, disabled and then another important one is encryption during data transfer this is a very important one and you can just enable this. I would say enable it always, because that means that when data is being transferred from that VMware platform to that Synology NAS for backup purposes by Active Backup for Business, that data in flight is encrypted as well. So if someone would get hold of data in flight with a man in the middle attack, for example, or dump it at the switch level, well, the data is just encrypted. It's of no use and there is no value in it. So I would say enable this, of course, when enabling this option, it will use up some CPU cycles, do some testing in your environment and see how it is. 
Then we have some other options. Um, I can enable VMware vSphere storage detection. What it will do, it will check where that virtual machine is stored on that VMware platform, on what data store, because it will create a snapshot. And when the space on that VMware data store is, um, is, is full, when there is no space left, that snapshot can fail, for example, right? And then your backup will fail. So you can enable this, but in most cases, I find that um, when you are running VMware vSphere, you are running VMware platform, you have some kind of monitoring there already, which will alert you beforehand if a storage, a data store is filling up, right? So depending on your environment, enable or disable this option. And then I talked about the enable backup verification. And the reason I cannot use it here, because as you can see here, it says Synology Virtual Machine Manager is not installed or run. In order to enable backup verification, what it will do is it will create a backup of those virtual machines, and then it will start up that virtual machine on that Synology Virtual Machine Manager, and at the same time, it will create a video and make that video available for you. So you can see how that uh, restore process would, would be. This is the verification part. A video for another time. Let's click on advanced settings. In the advanced settings, I can specify specific credentials to log in on that virtual machine, on a specific virtual machine, for example, for specific application tasks, or I can set up a script which has to be run for that virtual machine when creating a backup. Because for application aware backups, there are several applications which are supported, but a lot of applications are not supported with application aware backups. But I need to stop that application on a, uh, in a proper way before taking a backup. Well, I can define a specific script there. Click on Next. As you can see, it will now say everything is OK for that virtual machine. It's the backup will succeed if I create a backup task now. So I click on Next. And now I can set up a schedule. I will leave it at daily or depending on your business needs, you can even run it every hour if you want to. And of course, we have backup windows. If, for example, you only want your backup task to run during the night because then the office is closed and no one is using that application, well, you can define a specific time slot here and specify when a backup needs to be run, right? Let's click on Next. This is a very important one, the retention policy, because retention policy can be defined by versions. In this case, how many versions of the virtual machines in this backup task you want to keep? Or you can say, let the versions, just ignore the versions, keep all versions for a specified days. So this is something you need to consider very carefully. What do you want to do? What is your backup retention policy? What is the business basically telling you to do? Do you need to keep 10 versions or 20 versions of 100 versions of a virtual machine? Because that can be valid in specific situations. Or do you want to keep backups for specified days? Also, you can set up advanced retention policies. And if you click on set rules, you will see that there is a very detailed feature set available here to what we call in the backup um, uh, scene, the grandfather, father, son principle, right? You can set up specific thresholds to keep yearly, monthly, weekly, and daily backups, or even for versions. Again, this all depends on your business. I will say in my case, let's keep seven days of backups for this virtual machine. Click on next. Now we're at the configure restoration privileges. This is where you define who has access to that self-service portal. In the beginning of the video, I showed you on the Synology feature page, there is a self-service restore portal, which admins or authorized users have access to that portal and can do restores from that portal. Well, these are only local users and groups on my Synology. Of course, if you connect your Synology to Active Directory, or even Azure Active Directory, you will see all these, those users and groups here being populated. Select the users or the groups you want to give access to, to the self-service resource portal, and click on Next. You will see a task summary. That's OK. Everything is fine. Click on Done. When I click on Done, it will ask me, do you want to backup now? 
I will say yes because this is the first backup I'm running. And it will now go through the backup. Let's select the task and click on details and see what it does. So this is just a small virtual machine running on that uh, hypervisor, on that uh, VMware ESXi host. So the backup of this, uh, this virtual mach machine will be very fast, as you can see. It's already transferring some data here, and it's telling me on where it is. If I click on the log tab, you will see specifically what's it, what the backup task is doing, because this is very important for audit purposes, right? If you want to always have a log file and you want to always be able to trace back steps in case you have to troubleshoot something or something has gone wrong or you have a question from your security um, a chief a security officer, right? And he wants to know who has access to backups and who has done some specific restores. You can always access the log and you can just get that information. This information cannot be deleted here as well. So that's very good to know. Now, the backup is successful. The virtual machine has been backed up. It has transferred 1.7 gigabytes of data. The backup took nearly 45 seconds, very fast. And also it will show you how much data has been transferred. This is the first backup. So it will transfer, of course, a lot of data. And let's click on close. So if I go on the overview tab, now I can see that I have a green dot on the date where my backup task, which I just created, was run and completed successfully. If I have backup tasks defined to run on specific dates or days, and if the backup tasks fail, well, this will not be green anymore. It will be yellow or red. That means you have to take some action there. Just scroll down and you can see a lot of other information appearing here. You can see how much data was transferred and depending on the virtual machines and how many you add, this will be of course a lot um, a lot more in the in the storage status. If I go to activities, I can see what the activities were. I can see the task history and of course I can generate reports. This is very important if you want to generate reports uh, for your chief security officer or for the business. If I click on storage, I will see how much storage is being used for the backups. As you can see here, where the, where the share is located and there is only one protected virtual machine there and the data reduction, well, yeah, the backup data size was 1.7 gigabytes. Space saved by DDoP is 70 MB. Uh, it's not that high, but this will get higher. Uh, as you add more virtual machines here. And if you have virtual machines which are basically the same, well, the DDoP ratio will be higher then. Synology Active Backup for Business. It's a very easy solution if you have already have Synology running in your network. You don't have to invest in an additional backup solution because they're all the enterprise things, uh, features you need are already there for a Synology Active Backup. Just connect it to your VMware platform and start taking backups, making sure that those virtual machines are protected and safe. In the next video, I will show you how to restore from a backup you created with Synology Active Backup, how to do a full VM restore and a granular restore. So something nice to look forward to. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button below. It will help my channel a lot and see you next time. Bye.